When the Miami Heat made the NBA Finals in 2020, led by their ferocious and enigmatic leader Jimmy Butler, there were many people calling it a fluke, a one-off, luck of the draw. But the country boy turned five-time All-Star is no rookie when it comes to being underestimated. In fact, Butler has been overlooked and doubted not only throughout his NBA career, but his entire life. Making his rise to success as one of the NBA's fiercest competitors that much more sweet. This is the story behind Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler III was born on September 14, 1989 on the outskirts of Houston, Texas in the small town of Tumball. And basically, from the moment he was born, Butler faced an uphill battle. His father abandoned his family when he was only an infant, and at 13, he was without a home. My mom kicked me out of my house to tell the truth, and I bounced in and out of um, guys' houses in high school. Butler said his mother told him, I don't like the look of you, you gotta go. Jimmy bounced around, sleeping on friends' couches while attending Tumball High School. Like most kids from Texas, grew up passionate about two sports, football and basketball. But football never stuck, mainly because, according to Butler himself, he preferred to play basketball inside where there was air conditioning instead of being out in the hot sun all day. Playing high school ball in Tumball, Butler idolized Tracy McGrady, who played for the nearby Houston Rockets. He even wore his signature shoes and jersey number one. But unlike McGrady, who finished his high school career as a McDonald's All-American and National Player of the Year, Butler's path to stardom was much slower to develop. Butler didn't play AAU basketball, nor did he play against elite high school competition, and at times, he even had to play as the team's center. But eventually, through basketball, Butler found stability off the court. While playing in a summer league before his senior year, Butler was challenged to a three-point shootout by a freshman Jordan Leslie, and the two became close. So close, that Butler was eventually taken in by the Leslie family. It is hard, because, you know, people say, you just take a child you don't even know and you know and people think different things and say different things and, and not, not to say that someone didn't come to me and say oh don't let him in he's that he's supposedly he's done this you've got to go with your gut he's brought more to us than ever we could bring to him <laughs> by his senior year butler was his high school's team captain and mvp averaging over 19 points and eight rebounds but it wasn't enough to attract any division one schools he did, however, receive a scholarship to play for Tyler Junior College three and a half hours away from Tumball. They said you can go to school for free and play basketball, and that was enough for me. I'm good with that. I didn't care where it was, Butler said. In his freshman year at Tyler, Butler's game began to blossom, averaging over 18 points, 7.7 .7 rebounds, and three and a half assists. He was ranked the 127th best junior college prospect and drew the attention of Buzz Williams, a scout from the University of New Orleans at the time, who noticed Butler while recruiting another player. He watched me play. The very first thing he said to me was, Jimmy, you suck. I was like, oh, I don't even know you. Like, I don't, you know, like, I'm a kid. I'm just like, that's cool. When Williams became the head coach at Marquette, he offered Butler a life-changing scholarship. Butler jumped at the opportunity, signing his letter of intent back the same day he received it from a local McDonald's. Seeing Butler's untapped potential, Williams pushed Butler harder than any other player on the team. He would set up boot camps starting at 5.30 in the morning where Butler would have to run twice as many sprints as his teammates. One time before playing on the road versus Seton Hall, Butler's foot exploded out of his shoe on the last sprint of the day. Williams didn't stop practice, forcing Butler to run with only one shoe. Years later, Williams told Bleacher Report that he coached Butler in a manner that bordered on inhumane. In fact, that coaching method mixed with being out of his element in Wisconsin winters almost made Butler quit the game of basketball. 
and tell you the truth, I didn't do no research. I didn't know that it snowed. I didn't know that it got cold. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I went up there like I was still in Texas. Basketball shorts, t-shirts, flip-flops. But Williams' efforts paid off. After averaging 5.6 points in his first year with Marquette, he became the team's second leading scorer as a junior in year two, scoring nearly 15 points, grabbing just under six and a half rebounds per game, and earning an All Big East honorable mention. As a senior, he again received an All Big East honorable mention after averaging 15.7 points and 6.1 rebounds while leading the 11th seed Marquette to a pair of upsets in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament. He also completed his goal of receiving a college education, graduating with an associate's degree in communication. In a January 2021 GQ profile, Butler said he was lucky to have a coach like Williams because it made him the player he is today. In 2011, the Chicago Bulls selected Butler with the 30th and final pick in the first round of the NBA draft. Butler, once again, had to prove himself. This time on a Bulls team led by a young MVP in Derrick Rose, a spirited Joakim Noah, and their fiery coach Tom Thibodeau that had just won 62 games the year before. His first couple of seasons in the NBA resembled his slow start at Marquette, playing for a hard-nosed coach who would have to make him earn his minutes. In his rookie year, Butler barely received playing time, averaging only 8 minutes a game. His sophomore year started off the same way, but with Rose sidelined with a major injury, Butler's role began to grow. By the 2013 playoffs, he had established himself as a starter, playing the second most minutes on the team, only behind all-star Luol Deng. Year three looked like the year where Butler and Rose would develop a strong partnership, but Rose tore his meniscus less than two months into the season, thrusting Butler into a more prominent role again. He led the entire NBA in minutes per game at 38 and famously set a franchise record by playing 60 minutes in a triple overtime thriller against the Orlando Magic. And by the end of the season, Butler's ferocious defense was earning recognition as he was voted to the NBA All-Defensive second team. But this is where his relationship with the Bulls began to derail. Coming off a career year, the Bulls offered Butler, a restricted free agent at the time, a four-year, $44 million contract extension. But here's the thing, the Bulls front office at the time reportedly threatened to cut Butler's minutes if he didn't sign the contract and replace him with Tony Snell the following year. Butler declined the offer and bet on himself, setting a precedent that future NBA players would also follow. Coach Thibodeau ignored the front office's threats, playing Butler a career-high 38 minutes a game, leading to what was a breakout year for the man they now call Jimmy Buckets. Butler averaged 20 points, almost 6 rebounds, and nearly 2 steals to bring home the 2014-2015 Most Improved Player Award. It's an incredible achievement, but more than anything, I just want to continue to improve because I think there's so much that I can get better at and I just want to help my team win. I just want to get another trophy and I want to I want to win that championship. Butler had done it. A country boy from Texas who was homeless at the age of 13 had put his stamp on the NBA and he did it while proving his own team wrong. The Bulls, now realizing they couldn't afford to lose Butler, inked him to a five-year, $95 million extension in the summer of 2015. But Butler would never see out of that deal with the Bulls. Despite reaching the playoffs in five straight years, Thibodeau was fired due to a strained relationship with the front office, and he was replaced by Iowa State coach Fred Hoiberg ahead of the 2015-2016 season. And the Bulls that season looked like a shell of their former selves. Former Defensive Player of the Year Joakim Noah had begun to regress, and Derrick Rose was nowhere near the MVP player he was before his injuries. This was now Butler's team, but it didn't appear that his teammates understood that. Butler would later say, I don't think everybody was on the same page, truthfully, for what guys' roles were going to be. The Bulls finished the season 9th in the Eastern Conference with a 42-40 record and traded Rose to the Knicks in the offseason. Noah would follow, signing with New York in free agency, leading many to believe that they just wanted to get away from Butler. 
Chicago's front office made a quote unquote big splash in the same offseason by signing Dwayne Wade and Rajon Rondo, who at the time were shells of their older selves. And the trio didn't really make sense on the court together. But after a 23 and 24 start, a frustrated Butler called out his teammates for a lack of hustle and a stigma began to grow around him as a leader. When it became clear the Bulls would have to choose between Hoiberg's pace and space offense or a more ISO-heavy approach centered around Butler, they sided with the coach. On the night of the 2017 NBA Draft and after a full season of trade rumors, the Bulls traded Butler to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Butler was exactly what the Wolves needed. They had a promising young core in Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins, and Butler could help lead the franchise to something it hadn't seen in 13 years, playoff basketball. Plus, Jimmy was also reunited with his former coach Thibodeau and backcourt mate Rose. Thibodeau leaned on Butler once again to carry the team. At 28 years old, he still led the league in minutes, but by game 62, his legs gave out. Butler takes it away from a couple of Rockets, and Gibson throws up an air ball. He tore his meniscus and had to miss six weeks. Despite that, he came back just in time to save the Wolves, helping them win their last three games, including an overtime thriller on the last day of the season, helping them clinch the eighth spot in the West, and breaking that 13-year playoff drought. One second. The drought is finally over. Of disappointment and frustration has come to an end. The Wolves lost in five games to the first seed Rockets and in the process lost Butler's commitment to the franchise as well. Between games four and five in that series, Butler told the media, I don't play for any individual stats or accolades and at times I get lost in how everybody is not built the way I am built. A couple months later, the Chicago Sun-Times reported that Butler was not interested in signing an extension with Minnesota because of what he perceived as Towns' nonchalant attitude. In September, Butler sat down with Thibodeau before training camp and requested a trade. Thibodeau, like he did with the Bulls front office years ago, refused to listen. And then, the infamous practice. Here's how the story goes. Butler showed up to training camp one day, picked up a bunch of third stringers, and thoroughly beat the Wolves starting lineup in a scrimmage while yelling and screaming at players, coaches, and front office members who were watching. At one point, Butler yelled to GM Scott Layden on the sideline, you f***ing need me. You can't win without me. Jimmy didn't feel appreciated for what he had done for Minnesota. And after that practice, it became more evident. It's about like saying, we need you. We want you here. We can't do this without you. And that was the disconnect all year long. Like you're you're saying one thing and you're saying it and you're saying it and you're saying it. I mean, I've I've learned enough times in life that, you know, saying something is completely different than acting upon it. So on November 12, 2018, only a couple weeks into the season, the Wolves traded Butler to the Philadelphia 76ers. Butler arrived in Philadelphia with a legitimate chance of leading this team to an NBA title with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons by his side, but still, there was more drama. Jimmy admitted that at the time, he was unapologetically confrontational, even citing his days with the Bulls and at Marquette as shaping him into the kind of player he was. Butler's issues with the Sixers mainly came down to his role. With Simmons and Embiid, Philly already had enough mouths to feed. The Sixers were still good. They finished with the third best record in the Eastern Conference, and if it weren't for an incredible game-winning shot by Kawhi Leonard in Game 7 of the East Semis, who knows how far Butler could have taken Philly. The awkward basketball fit led him to walk away in the offseason, signing a four-year, $142 million max contract with the Miami Heat. Later on the JJ Redick podcast, Butler explained why he decided to leave Philly. Somebody asked, can you control him? Like, can you control Jimmy? If you can control Jimmy, we would think about having him back. I was like, you don't gotta worry about it. Shit, can't nobody control me. For one, I ain't just out there doing no bullshit, but the fact that you're trying to control a grown man, nah, I'm cool. Butler's outwork everyone mentality wasn't a match for the younger teams in Philly and Minnesota. It wasn't a match for the more laid back head coach Fred Hoiberg in Chicago. But if there was any team, any organization that fit the exact culture that Jimmy was looking for, it was the Miami Heat. 
led by the godfather himself, Pat Riley, the Heat run an organization that thrives off competition. Now, Butler had a championship winning head coach in Eric Spolstra and a supporting cast of Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, and Duncan Robinson that suited Butler's playing style. Three knockdown shooters to compensate for Butler's lack of shooting and a big man that could help anchor their formidable defense. The Heat finished with the fifth best record in the East, and when it came time for the NBA restart inside the Disney World bubble with no distractions, Butler's work ethic was amplified. The Heat would receive complaints about Butler working on his ball handling at three in the morning in his hotel room. When Miami upset the Milwaukee Bucks in the East semis, players were allowed to invite their friends and family into the bubble. Butler didn't, saying this was a business-only trip. Speaking of business, he opened a coffee chain in the bubble, charging $20 a pop for espressos. And I came to a big face coffee. But it's closed, man. Unfortunately, this time I bring cash too. That laser-like focus paid off for Butler in the Heat as they beat the Celtics in the conference finals, securing his first NBA Finals appearance and the Heat's first NBA Finals berth since the LeBron James era. Now, injuries to Goran Dragic and Bam Adebayo didn't allow fans to see a fully healthy Heat team against the Lakers in the final, but they still had Butler, their heart and soul. Down 2-0 and the series in the balance in Game 3, Butler and LeBron went head-to-head -head in one of the greatest finals duels in recent history. Butler dropped 40 points, 11 rebounds, 13 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks, and became only the third player in NBA history to get a triple-double in the finals. They ultimately lost in 6 games, but Butler did everything he could, averaging a staggering 26 points, 8 rebounds, and almost 10 assists on 55% shooting. And he received praise from many of his peers in the league for his relentless performance. Through Butler's 10-year career, he's a five-time All-Star, been named to three All-NBA teams, four All-Defense teams, one Olympic gold medal, and won the Most Improved Player Award. It took a while, but the perception around Butler has changed. He went from being viewed by many as an arrogant player who ruined locker room chemistry to the heart and soul of an organization and one of the most likable but fierce competitors in the NBA. Butler's goal has remained the same since day one, as a kid in Tumball, Texas, to find a home where he's appreciated. And now, with the Heat, he can finally be himself. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.